today. From SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. This is Pat NFL 21. this across the 20 but not much further as he's dropped at the 23 yard line so here's the charger offense making their way out and at quarterback from the university of oregon it's justin herbert i read something prepping for this game that he said prior to and i think he really said it a few months ago where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end he's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him <laughs> along the way and I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy who springs for the good stuff. Here's the first carry for Austin Eckler. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. No doubt about it. Really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Here's Herbert down on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. Herbert's pass incomplete on the throwaway. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Herbert. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. penalties going against, but you and I both know they're going to take care of the quarterback. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. Herbert will give this one to Eckler, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. Justin Herbert looking to throw on second down. He's going to look for Allen now on the deep ball. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Keenan Allen 
the intended target, and it's third down. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the shotgun, here's Herbert. And that will be incomplete. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. Fourth down and on is Ty Long to punt. And at the controls, the former Cal Bear standing at six foot four, quarterback Jared Goff. There's a toughness about Jared Goff that maybe he doesn't get enough credit for. His freshman year at Cal, team went one and eleven. His rookie year with the Rams, he was zero and seven as a starter, undaunted in either case, and has come back each and every time to flash the ability that made him the number one overall pick in the draft when he came out of Cal. Golf will lead the Rams up here, first and 10 at their own 21. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. From the 21, it's second and 10. Now it's gone. Got a man open. It's Tyler Higby. And we'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Now the first carry for Cam Akers. Gets by him, and now a little daylight. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's right down. It'll be a first down for the Rams there on a pickup of 18. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. First down, they'll stay with Akers on the ground. On the tackle, it was the West Virginia man, Kaiser White. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the gun, here's gone. That'll be caught by Cup, and he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Defensive back on the field for the Chargers now on third down. A shotgun snap for Gong. Gets this into the hands of the tight end Higby. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now... I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You've still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take
take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. A carry here for the big tight end. And he'll take this one down to the 36. In on the tackle, the former All-Pro Chris Harris. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. They'll run this with Akers. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. third down for the eighth play of the drive. Out of the gun. Goff. Now a clash of bodies here and it's intercepted. Picked off by Casey Hayward. They'll take over first down. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. On the stop was Aaron Donald. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. And that's into the hands of Eckler. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there, and it's going to bring up a third down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. Going to throw on third down. And that's Allen. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. 23 yards on the play. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. A shotgun snap for Herbert. He'll get this to Eckler. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of five. And it'll be third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. 
And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. That'll make it fourth down after the loss of one. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Here's Ty Long now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. as they take over. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And in enemy territory last time through the interception, we'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to throw, golf. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up, second and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Akers. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. One thing that really impressed me about Joey Bosa is that he doesn't sacrifice the run game trying to get sacks. This guy really knows how to hold the point of attack, great leverage, and then goes and sheds people and makes plays. And at 6'5", 270, just a monster. Absolute monster with a really high move. An extra cornerback now in the game for the Chargers here on third. Here's Gaul. And able to find Higby. It's complete. And he's going to be out up around the 45 yard line. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. They'll run a draw now with Akers. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them.
The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. From the shotgun, here's a give to Akers. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. It's a six-yard run, leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. The Rams on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll try and run for this with Akers. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. down throw gone that's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds they picked up five yards last time now they double it and get 10 here in so many ways throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter Second down, Akers, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. He was brought no gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. It'll be a two-yard gain, and this long drive is going to continue as they move the chains again. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. the sweep here this is cup and he went backwards he'll be down at the 30. officially it's a one yard loss that's going to bring up second and 11. that's the danger charles of running plays like this for your wide receiver they can hit big or they can be duds yeah you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it but in this case they gave yardage and didn't get it back Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Here's Akers. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. The Rams on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and eight. 
Goff now to throw. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. A 44-yard attempt. The game knocks this one through. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. Chargers, Chargers, nothing. Well, that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So, some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. What did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. After the main field goal, Gay back out there to kick it off. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. At their own 20-yard line. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that can put your team in some jeopardy? Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll hand off here to Eckler. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Operating from the gun. Herbert, Herbert has it knocked free. And the Rams have got it. The defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. First and 10 right at the 20. Following the fumble recovery, Goff. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. I think we can all understand what they're thinking right now. They take over the ball in field goal range after the turnover, so they've got that in their hip pocket. But they've got to go for the end zone and turn this into a bigger point. Their thinking is a touchdown is really what they should get from starting here. Getting three points at the end of this drive, that would feel disappointing. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. On the ground, it's Akers. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. They got the ball in great field position after the fumble, but this defense trying to stand tall. They certainly are, and a lot of times after you pick up a fumble or get an interception, you have momentum on your side. You kind of walk through a defense and score. Not so fast, not in this case. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. They've got a first and goal to go at the seven. They'll run here with Akers. 
And the Rams are going to have a first and goal. It's some good running there. Gets him down to about the two-yard line, knocking on the door. Give him four on the carry there. It's second and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Incomplete. Out of the end zone. Brings up third and goal. Well, they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Now gone. from Jared Goff. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Matt Gay on for the extra point. up and good and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip five plays there on that drive and it winds up with a touchdown for los angeles Taken about a yard deep. And up to about the 26 yard line, just across the 25. At their own 26 yard line. LA readies for its next possession. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Herbert on first down now. Finds the open man, it's Mike Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense going to have to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. it 
to the 34. Good enough for the first. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, though, if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll try the air now with Herbert, and that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So mark off the yardage for muffing the passer. And I've seen this before on a screen pass. Not only are you rushing the passer, you're rushing him deeper than normal. And I think a little frustration kicks in at the end. You're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Herbert will give this one to Eckler, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. Second down, here's Herbert. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Hills hit, and he lost the football. That touchdown, Chargers. Let's go. I'm glad we were paying attention during the rules seminar because we learned the only time you can't advance a fumble like that is in the last two minutes of either half. Right, other than that, if that ball's out, whether forward or backwards, it's live and free for anybody. No doubt about it. When you say free, that means he's got free reign to pick it up and go. And that's exactly what happened there. Took it in for a touchdown. So they need to determine if that knee was down before the ball was coughed up. And they also wanted to make sure that the ball was possessed as they were going through, that the ball wasn't working its way free before the knee hit the ground. drive the Rams offense at the line. They're starting to put some space here. You know, the first quarter, they didn't look so hot offensively. This second quarter, though, they've looked really good. They jumped in the saddle in a big way now, and now they're in full gallop. I mean, before, <laughs> kind of cantering around a little bit, right, trying to feel their way, not getting done what they wanted to. But somehow they put it together with play calling, execution, and now there's a pretty big gap. And they'll look to make that gap even bigger here. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now a run with Akers. And he's going to have a first down on a gain of about 10, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. It's so that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Golf throwing complete to count. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. 
Well, fair to say that when you're looking at guys that can run like the wind, you often find them at the wide receiver position, and that was special there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And his top speed, as computed by Next Gen Stats, not bad. He was pushing 20 miles an hour. First down. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown. Tyler Higby. 56 yards. And the Rams add on to their lead. And that one obviously worked out, but it's one where you kind of hold your breath because he was sitting there waiting to take a hit as he threw that ball downfield. And this is the NFL. You're going to be tested a lot as a guy throwing the football. Will you stand in there, take the hit, and deliver downfield? And when you do it consistently, your offensive line loves you, your receivers love you, everyone does their job to the utmost because they have that kind of confidence in you, and they know that you've shown some toughness, and that's what he exhibited there. But your body hates you. No, your body's not real thrilled <laughs> about the whole thing, but ice packs all around for the QB. And his kick is right through. Just a four-play drive that time. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Justin Herbert leading this unit out for their next possession. They've been faced with a tough test today here. Crowd's been really good. They're struggling. He's struggling. We'll see if they can pick things up. And the crowd has had an impact, and they feel good about that because he's not playing very well, not getting the ball to the right places, not doing the things he normally does. He's got to find a way to turn it around against this hostile group. Yeah, because on the road, don't you look to your quarterback a lot? You have to because you certainly can't look to the crowd to help you. They're there to be against you. So your quarterback has to lead you, and the best way he can do it is to play well. That throw into the arms of Allen, and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. And his throw is incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended receiver. But it'll be second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. To throw again, Herbert. And that is incomplete here. I'll tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. down to the 35-yard line. Now the Chargers are going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime.
first and ten here. You know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. He's airing it out for Williams. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup. Relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Throwing again. Herbert. Right back to Williams, and this time he's got it. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. field position for the Rams as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Now Goff. That's taken in complete to Reynolds. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Here's Goff. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, Make the right choice, get rid of it, live to fight another down. On second and ten, Goff. He'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. the 27-yard line for a first. To the air again. Golf. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. The Charger D making things difficult, and it's fourth down. It's fourth down. comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And his kick is good. He just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. 
still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. We haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Charger drive about to get going. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome everyone to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. First and 10 at their own 23 -yard. LA set to take over again on offense. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Go off on first down. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. A shotgun snap for Goff. They'll get this one to Cup complete. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Seven yards to pick up there. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Out of the gun. Gone. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. This has to go down as one of the simple routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Go off throwing again. Now that'll be caught by Cup, and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A gain there of 12 yards. 
yards and a first down L.A. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first and ten, Goff. Trying over the middle, and it's incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. And that'll bring up second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Again, golf. He'll throw complete to Cam Akers. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Throwing again is golf. And got him in. It's Woods. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, golf. This will be caught at about the six. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the seven. A gain of six there on first. It's a pick up of six. Brings up second and four. Four yards to go on second down from the seven. From the gun, here's Goff. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. The connection there, Goff to Cooper Cup. And the Rams add on to their lead. You know, in golf, they often talk about playing the course and not worrying about what the other players are doing, what their scores are. That's essentially what we're seeing from this offense. They're just having fun and doing what they feel like doing today. Gay is on for the point after. Stretches the lead to 27. That time, a nine-play drive. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Kick this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, <laughs> wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah. But right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. 
Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. On the ground, it's Eckler. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. it to the 34 good enough for the first a third down gain of three yards and that'll be enough I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team right you gotta be able to put your nose in there smell where the first down sticks are and get there From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Going on the ground with Eckler. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. It's Eckler again. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. Well, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And there's an old chestnut of an expression called getting on your horse. And I hate to use it, but I'm going to right here because it absolutely applies. How about the head of steam he had behind him? And he was absolutely galloping downfield. That was something to see. And if you're looking for proof of his speed, Next Gen stat shows that he was traveling just over 21 miles an hour there. Running on first down, Eckler. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. From the shotgun, here's Herbert. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Austin Eckler, the intended target, and it's third down. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Here's Ty Long now as he's on to punt for L.A. And 
And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. 20-yard line. Getting set to go again here, Robert Woods marches back onto the field. Sort of a slow and steady game so far, but reliable for him here in this third quarter. Sounds like we're describing a possession receiver, right? The one that finds a way to make the big catches, the ones that break the backs of defenses, keep first downs, accumulating. I think he's that and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, he's been pretty good so far. We'll see if he can make this good game a great game. Golf will lead the Rams up here, first and 10 at the 20. He'll drop to throw. Oh, incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it there. And it'll be second down. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's gone. Now he's going to go up top over the middle. He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down deep into Charger territory. A big play there for L.A. 63 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. I don't care what sport you're playing, everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Two yards left on second down from the nine. They'll run this with Akers. And he's going to take this one in for the Rams touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown run. And this offense continues to pour it on. When you talk about a battle being won in the trenches, that touchdown right there, a lot of credit to the offensive lineman. Yeah, when you watch them surge across the front, they really created great space for the runner to get in. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards. And it was Cam Akers who capped it off with a touchdown. Touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. At their own 19 yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? so tough because we always talk about it being a team game and you need all 11 working well together but every now and then partner you need that one guy who could make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things and i think that's what they're looking for right now yeah you talk about going to your playmakers they probably need to do it find someone 
that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Out of the gun, Herbert. Looking left sideline, incomplete. First pass from the sideline and incomplete. It's third down and 13. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Herbert. That's into the hands of Eckler. And a loss of three to bring up four. I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball, because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And on is the punter long here as he sends this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and 10. Getting set to go again here, Robert Woods marches back onto the field. He sort of just keeps chipping away at this defense. Hasn't had a spectacular game, but here in the third quarter, that they've known all game long that he's there. He's the type of guy that frustrates you if you're playing defense because when you think you've taken away something or you think you've got him in check, he comes up with another catch, the chains move, or he finds a way to get it to the end zone. He's that guy that drives you crazy, and offense is loving. He's hoping to drive him more crazy here coming up. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Call. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. He was going right back to Cooper Cup. And that takes us from second to third down. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and 10. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. Throwing on third, Goff. He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now. Yeah, the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked out and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they will begin with, should we call it, far from ideal starting field position, their own two-yard line. So what's your definition of ideal? The one-yard line on the other side of the field. Yes, exactly right. So yes, your definition is apropos in this case.
They started on the ground with Eckler. And he's able to get him a small cushion before being taken down at the five, a gain of three. And while they hope to continue this drive, it's really already mission accomplished. They've given enough space now that they have to pump the ball. They've done so with that first run. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Operating from the gun. Herbert looking for Allen. He's got him on the slam. And they'll get him down up past the 15. 12 yards there and a first down. And the Chargers first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Back now here on EA Sports. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the gun, Herbert. Hunter Henry brings it in. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. I think it's fair to say there's nothing that gets a crowd to its feet quite like a big play. And that was something special there. Boy, was he moving. And we do talk a lot about how the tight end position has changed in the NFL. Here's a great example. It used to be that they were linemen who occasionally caught passes. Now they're wide receivers who occasionally block people. And right here, this isn't tight end speed. It's definitely wide receiver speed. And his top speed, as computed by Next Gen Stats, not bad. He was pushing 20 miles an hour. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Operating from the gun, Herbert going deep here for Allen. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Allen, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Too many zeros on the stat sheet thus far. No touchdown passes, no points for his team, but he remains undaunted. Still attempting to get his team on the scoreboard, firing the ball downfield. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. To throw again, Herbert. Henry's got it, out on the left side. Five yards, now it's third and five. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Herbert throwing again. Got a man and he hits him in stride. Taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty as a result of that hit there. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and 10. Herbert back to the air. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. The hit comes late, we saw it, there's your flag. And we know that there's a guideline, right? Ball's gone, you get one step. If you're within one step of the quarterback, you can hit him as long as it's still done legally. But anything outside of that, looks like an extra step was involved. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. Herbert operating from the red zone. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. And 
incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Herbert. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And the Chargers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Sets him up nicely. First and goal. It was a pickup of 14. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. To the air again, Herbert. Herbert has it knocked free. But a Chargers player was able to fall on it, and they'll keep possession. We hear them discuss red zone efficiency a lot, CD, and they almost gave that one up in the red zone. Luckily, they'll have another shot. And you and I both know that every offensive coordinator, play caller in the league, they take particular delight in their red zone calls because those are the payoff ones. But you can't call a play if your team doesn't have the ball. Got to secure it. Very fortunate to get another shot. Here's second and goal. Draw play. It's Eckler. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. What a nice little game. They do get six, but they've still got some work to do on third and goal. What a game this defense continues to play, huh? Yeah, they've been aggressive from the first snap, and they've controlled this ball game. But right now, if you're on the other side of the ball, you've got to match that aggressiveness. No points so far in this game. Moving the football, got to be that way to go against them and try and get some points on the board. And I'm curious on the defensive side if they stay aggressive because you know they want to pitch this shutout. Yeah, they have to be aggressive, but they also have to be smart about it as well because one mistake can turn into six points. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin, fourth quarter. You're going. And a field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. And they snap it to Herbert. And this will be caught in the end zone for the Chargers touchdown. Hunter Henry there to make the grab. And the Chargers are able to close the gap just a bit. Obviously, the scoreboard right now is not the friend of this rookie quarterback, but hey, a touchdown pass there maybe builds a little confidence. Every rep is valuable when you're a rookie. Every time you step up and throw the football, there's a lesson to be learned. Yeah, he took advantage of a little bit of loose coverage there with the lead, but at the same time, got it done. It'll take a little bit of satisfaction away from that throw. And the lead drops from 34 to 27. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. Long now will kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Rams take over first and 10 at their own 24 yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. Now the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh God, we gotta move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. Golf will lead the Rams up here, first and 10 at their own 24. Yeah. 
They'll begin on the ground with Akers. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. They'll run on first down with Akers. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Pulled over a few people. Look at that one right up the gut. Saw through three corners. No reason to lighten up now. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They'll run here with Akers. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. Third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The football going back to the Rams now. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll set up the throw from the gun. And to the right side here, it's Allen. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. From the gun, Herbert. He's going to look downfield for Henry. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way, way out there, but it'll be third down. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it. Unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. So after the second down in completion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Operating from the gun, Herbert. And he comes back with one complete. And all the way in for a Charger touchdown. A big play there. 76 yards. And the Chargers, they're able to cut into that deficit. And nothing too crazy there. A quick slant, and then he just had a seam. He found a seam. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes it and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone. And the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on them. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Ball was out of his hands quickly, into the hands of the receiver, and then he was gone.
Badgley on for the extra point. And the lead is down to 20. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the hands team for the Rams able to secure the football. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. First down, Akers. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Good gain there on first down. and keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. They'll go again here with Akers. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead him to fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. They'll run for it with Akers. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for first down. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Thought they might throw the football with a little chunk that they had remaining on fourth down, but they ran it. They got it. And the reason they were able to get it done, he ran that play with conviction, didn't he? Understood he would get a little bit of help from his friends up front, but it was really on him to go ahead and make the power move and get it done, and that he did. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Well, as always, prior an extreme pleasure to share a booth with you. I, I have to 
say I am impressed at your discipline because you came here and you said you were not going to eat any of the media buffet. <laughs> you made it to the end. You didn't consume a single calorie. I appreciate that. What you missed is me going to the concession stand outside of your eyesight and getting it done that way. Look, I mean, they were serving the good stuff. I had to do it. Oh, man, but you're, you're svelte in good shape, but yeah, you cheated a little bit. We'll let it slide. I appreciate that. Always a pleasure to work with you. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.